Hey yo, it's your boy Ancient Albatross here behind the scenes as usual these days. But we have the usual suspects of AD or Alfred Dean. We have Spigs18 or Anthony. And if you haven't already, be sure to follow us here on Twitch and subscribe to us over on YouTube. It is a great help to our channel. And uh, we really appreciate all the support we've received so far to get where we've gotten. Wouldn't be anywhere without you guys. We love you. Uh, but, but without uh, further ado, Anthony, what are we doing here tonight? Oh, today we have a super special show. We're going to talk about the Cypher System bestiary. And we're going to, me and Dean are going to crack it open and look at it for the very first time. All I've essentially seen on the PDF has been the cover and the table of contents. I have not looked at anything else. Neither have, have, you, have you looked at anything? Neither have I. I've actually been so busy with life and everything that's going on that I haven't had the opportunity to look. And i um, pretty excited about what we're getting ready to get into tonight, to say the least. Uh, before we even get into it, speaking of life, how the hell you been? Oh, man, things are looking up a little bit, you know. Still need to find a new job and all that good stuff, but... Uh, you know, things are just looking looking better. You know, I uh, won 30% disability from the military finally after all these years. So that's a little something. <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. I would say nice, but then having to get disability probably isn't nice. So I would say good for you, I guess, <laughs> without sounding awkward. Yeah. Uh, I had freaking COVID. So I was out of commission for four days, which yeah. freaking sucked. So yeah, I I you think you know I was gonna look um look through the, my um my PDF to look through this book while, while while I was out of commission, but I purposely held back from doing that because I wanted uh live our initial reactions, first time seeing this, because anybody that's seen any of our episodes. We've been screaming for this book for, I don't know, three or four years now. So, I don't know. We've been asking for it. Yeah, we've been asking for it. I think this would be the perfect book to view live, you know, and get a, like a honest initial reactions and takes on this. Because if it isn't good, we're definitely going to say it. If I'm disappointed, I'm definitely going to say it because this is a book that I've wanted for a long time. Uh oh. So, is I has I'm just curious from chat has chat um have your guys skimmed through this book yet or is this mostly your guys first times as well? I think a lot of people have looked at it on. Uh, there's been a lot of chatter on the server. A lot of people have been saying a lot of good things about it. But uh, yeah, you know um. Jungle God said he hasn't seen anything, which is cool. Yeah, Jake just said he skimmed it a little. Zeus Legion said he skimmed it a little. All right, so before uh, Lord and Lady Middles, that's not fair. You worked on the book. <laughs> <laughs> she totally missed the email. <laughs> All right, so before we even get started, I have one more question for chat. Uh, Ken have said he ha he has it either. What are you expecting from this book? Like, uh, and this is a question for you too, Dean. But let's, so we just get it out of the way first, right? What are you expecting from this book before we even open it? And what would make you disappointed if it wasn't in there before we uh, even open it? Well, for me, I think the biggest thing I was looking for with this book was the fact that I wanted it to be uh, kind of multifaceted. I wanted it to be, uh, you know, kind of, you know, where you could just open it up and you could go to specific areas and be able to find exactly what you were looking for, no matter what the genre. And just looking at the table of contents, you know, since we, you know, we both are doing the same thing, we just have our table of contents open. I'm pretty excited with the way the table of contents looks already you know and then of course seeing the fact that we got a little preview with those gate folded pages and so on and so forth and just really i'm really kind of excited to see you know exactly how 
this whole book unfolds. But that's my biggest my biggest thing would be. What why would why would make you disappointed? Um, if it's a rehash, you know what. What I expect out of this book, again, like we were saying, was like it broken down like that. But MCG said they were going to make this book different than other monster books that they put out, like for Numenera and stuff like that. So I'm looking, I, I would be really disappointed if it felt like a more of a rehash of what has gone before. You know, I, I, I'm looking forward to see the innovations that they've added in, you know, a, a, aside from just the layout and the fact that we got gatefold pages. I want to see what they really put in here, you know? Uh, for me, straightforward, I'll pull the Band-Aid off. I'm expecting 95% or 90% original creatures. I would be disappointed if it's a 50-50 split between stuff that are in other books. I can see that. Yes, you know, because this is, this is the first Cypher System bestiary, and I know that everyone doesn't own every book, but this is just my personal thing, because I do happen to own every book. I want original, you know, I, I want a, original monsters. I, don't, I, I know there's going to be some reprints, because you can't avoid that. I just don't want the majority of the book to be reprints. Yeah, I mean, I can, I, I can see that, too. And, um, you know, like I said, just looking at the table of contents i do see some stuff but i also see a lot of stuff that we haven't had before you know and and i'm just that's that's where, where my hope is that there's a, a a different take there's something more than just the standard fare that we got from you know other monster books or other uh creature entrants so that's what i'm looking forward to so chat before we open it up um what would make you disappointed before we even get to it, to see what, see if anybody in chat has any suggestions. I know Jack and them were talking about how how um how the creatures are gonna be um separated. <laughs> Only text, no pictures. J uh, Jungle God said, "Yeah, that would help." So I think that I think that would suck for everybody. Especially with the fact that we're MCG is so noted for great artwork, such evocative artwork, it would be such a disappointment to have yeah. a bunch of text. Al said, "No cute people from Plane Breaker." I forget your name. <laughs> All right. Well, are you ready to get without, into this? Ad? Yep. Without further ado, guys. I'll, I'm switch. I'm gonna start sharing the screen right now. You told me to give you a little heads up. I'm going live right now. Give our technical wizard a couple of seconds to set it up. Zeus Regis said settings weren't going to make it in, only genre stuff. I wonder if they are, that's another one. I wonder if they are going to uh, like tackle specific settings, like this is the stay alive product or something like that. That would. No, I doubt, that's a, I doubt that that'll happen as well because, well, stay alive is a genre book, so it wouldn't need none, but it's settings as far as that would be Numenera, The Strange, Predation, so on and so forth. And I doubt that they're going to put anything that's you know setting specific but there's a ton of stuff that i'm looking at right now that could be used for those genres i'm looking just at the table of contents there's a there's a ton of stuff that can be used for you know those particular settings but you know mcg is anything that's one of their full-on settings they don't they kind of don't touch it and kind of leave it open for us you know setting see C cypher is uh Setting agnostic because <laughs> it'll work for anything. Hey guys, sorry for a second. I was having a little technical difficulty switching it now. Yeah, that's exactly what I was just saying, Jack. You know, it's uh, 
All right, so first off, what do you think of the cover? I, lo I love the cover artwork. The cover artwork is actually one of the best covers I've seen on a monster book because, you know, especially with it being ciphered the way it's set up, you know, it just gives you that whole multiversal type of feeling, you know, you got, you know, you got everything you can capsulate. I could see like the collector, this could be his place where, you know, as you get, you got the aliens with the, like the alien collecting different samples. You got a bear, a dinosaur, a chimera, uh, I was at a tiger over there, you know, lost in here. I think the cover is great. And of course, Bruce, oh, you guys, when you had Boots on earlier, Boots is the lead designer on this. You gonna scroll down. I always love that um, MCG does that separate page, you know, before the table of contents, where it's like a faded out piece of artwork. That's always hella cool. Yeah, the watermark. Yep. And I even like, uh, like on the uh, on the uh, credits page, you know, I, I like the fact that, you know, you got the faded out image behind it, but then you've got the, the prominent little figures right there in the front, which kind of make it like, you know, you're looking at a movie and you're, you know, you see in the background. I think it's pretty cool. Yep. Uh, of course, we mentioned earlier, Bruce Cordell was the lead designer. I think Bruce has shown that the majority of the creature creations in this but you also have work from Monty Cook, Dominic Dick, and Shauna Germain. And uh, look, look at this name right here, editorial intern. I wonder who that is. Oh yeah, that, that this Eileen Eileen girl lady person. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who that is. The, the golden ones, fingerprints are all over this book. Yeah, yeah. Was, you know, no different. Bear was the art director on this, and. Javier did all the graphic design and layout. Yeah. Uh, you know, they Javier, they do wonderful work. So I'm not expecting, they have a, a ton of artists on this one as well. Yeah, but, well, you know, they always have like the, the best artists, you know, conglomeration when they do these things. So it's pretty cool. All right, let's go to the table of contents, guys. So, okay, so the table of contents. Oh. The table of captains actually made me happy because that this was what I wanted to see. One of the major things we were just talking about. This is something I wanted to see. I wanted to see it broken apart like this only because, you know, you know, and then the fact that, you know, there'll, there'll probably be advice about using them and elsewhere and so on and so forth, but they kind of give you the core idea of each genre that they're that they're doing here, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, it's broken down by genre, which was the first initial surprise for me. And if you notice, it's pretty much the white books, like the the genres that are covered by the white books, mm -hmm. which are pretty cool too. And uh, is this the total creature count as well? Yes. So let's see how many creatures we got here. Before we even dig deep into it, that's what, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, it's so well over 50. 50. 57. And that's, that's, pretty, a, that's, that's pretty beefy. That's a pretty yeah. beefy book, considering it's only 200 I, I pages. I it beefy, but it's decent. Well, I say beefy, considering it's only 200 pages. Yeah. You know, you, you got a, you got 190, 194 pages of you know, creatures, and we know some creatures are getting, you know, three and four pages out of it because of the gatefold and stuff like that. So for it to be, you know, to get 57, to get almost 60 creatures out of it, you know, you're getting at least, you know, at the very least, what, about six per genre? At the minimum, I see six in one genre. And that's I'm going to say this off the bat. A lot of these are not rehashes, which is really cool right that's what i'm saying yeah. i'm looking at it overall i mean first of all uh let's just take 
let's just take, you know, if you look at part six and seven, which is superheroes and post apocalyptic. How did I know you were going straight to superheroes? <laughs> because it's me, you know. I mean, and Weird West. If you take all three of those, with the exception of what, zombies and maybe mutants, these are all new new creatures that we're getting, you know, basically getting a, a kind of a, a look at. And it's also like watch types of superheroes too, because like you know there's a speedster superhero in in um in what you call a claim the sky. But and I'll double check, but the way this is worded with, with the S on the supervillain leads me to believe they're gonna give you different variations of a speedster supervillain. I could be wrong, that's just my initial impression from looking at this, but it seems like like you're gonna see energy world of supervillains. You might have more, more than one option for each one. Yeah. With, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I can see that, or I can see that there was just gonna be like a lot of entries for like different things that you have your your speedsters or your or your villains do. I mean, just like the gadgeteer mastermind. I mean, to me, that's that's just hearkening towards like, you know, uh, the 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 the, what it, the trickster in Marvel comics or Doctor Doom or any of those people you know people who are you know I mean Doctor Doom will be magic too but the fact that you know the inventor type deal. Luke brought up a great point too. He said I noticed that the last two categories are the most are two of the most recent genre books. Still room for a volume two. Yeah, th that's a great point. It is only 200 pages, so I could see a second bestiary covering cyberpunk, pirate, secret order organizations. That's a great point, Zeus. All right, you ready to start? Uh, well, pirates, is actually, pirates is actually actually covered. If you didn't notice, pirates and mer pirates and mermaids. Oh my goodness! All right, so how do you want to do this? Do you want to just go down or? Like, you just want to look at fantasy first? Yeah, let's, then, see, let's look at them in order. Let's pick a couple of things from each one and talk about it. Uh, let's see what the, let's look at the first genre. Uh, it, of course, like every other book, it gives you uh, how to use the bestiary. And the artwork, this is crazy. Oh, hold on, let me scroll down so you guys can see this. This artwork is nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that that's, uh, that that's uh what's the name that's arcana the ancients right there you got a dwarf a dwarven warrior with a war hammer on some kind of spaceship you know there's barrier peaks guys <laughs> all right and now which this is fun this is actually really good too because i prefer to use my um my monster manuals my bestiaries in um looking up this way where creatures by level right and right off the bat the majority, you got the majority, I would say, are probably level four, level three, four, and five. But you do have a level 13, you do have a level 10, and you have two level nines and two level eights, or uh, three level eights. But it seems the majority are between three and three and six, I would say. And see, here's something else, too, that I think... Um... I think what 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 I love about it is, you know, and you know, MCG talks about it anyway. You know, these are all just guidelines. So yeah, they give you a, a buttload of stuff like three, four, five, and six. But these things could always be upgraded. You know, like if you wanted to turn, you know, your a cyborg is a level five creature, but you could turn your cyborg into, you know, the ultimate Terminator and make it a level eight or level nine. So, and I think uh, I'm quite sure there should probably be guidance for that in there, in there about upgrading. If no, it's definitely in the CSR and in most, and I know it's in Clay in the Sky for sure. But you know, like that, I always look at these, it's like the same way when you're playing D&D or something and you look, you look at CR rating. It, it's a guideline, but at least it's, it, it's a, you know, it's a, a power pointing into the general direction of where you want your game to be headed. So if you know you're doing a like a you know mid tier game, let me look at the level five and six creatures first, just so I can you know I might be able to pull some a basic creature out of this list before without having to make any adjustments because you know I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean we and that's what I'm saying though we we all get our our 
our lazy moments. And I, I, I think it's great for, you know, being able to jump right in and do whatever. But, you know, I mean, those those odd times that you might decide you want to do a little prep or you just get a little wild burp, you're behind because you're yeah. creating something that you think is a masterpiece. It, it's right there before you. Yep. And um, since it's broken down by genre, this is a little different as well. You get a little description of what each genre is about. So if you don't have all the white books, like this gives you a little excerpt of what, you know, since this is fantasy, what God Forsaken would have in the beginning, which is actually pretty cool too. And it could probably encourage you to want to pick up whatever the, the genre that you don't own by looking at the beast theory. And they, they give you a decent amount of creatures of fantasy. They give you dragons, elves, dwarves, adventurers, goblins, elementals, wizards, wraiths, orcs, trolls, and giants. And see what I like about that too, when you think oh, about it, related creatures as well. And but the other cool part about it is when you think about it, you right here. What what is that? Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven creatures set for fantasy. You literally have enough right there to do, you know, ten, fifteen different type of adventures. I mean, you can start out with goblins, you know, then you can have your people end up having to face against another group of adventurers, and then uh, you know what? Then they go to the dwarven lands, and then they go to the elven lands. You know, you can have this whole thing culminate with them ended up, you know, facing off against maybe dragons and giants at the same time or something. I like the fact that it kind of gives you a, a complete idea or kind of uh, steps you could take in order to build a complete campaign. I like, I like that. You also have the assumption that you wouldn't own this book without the CSR. So... Even if you had just those two books, there's enough creatures in each genre to cover most bases. Yeah, you could game. You could be gaming for a few years, depending on how you wanted to set up your 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 games and stuff. But what you oh, had. Here. Not only does it give you a little blurb on, on fantasy, it gives you a little fantasy adventure epic quest table. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's really cool. See, this is what I was talking about. These are this is this is the stuff that I was hoping for because they said they were going to do this different. This is the stuff that I'm saying should be in your monster book because it it really is giving giving you more than just oh look I need a monster. Now they're giving you things that you can do with these monsters and places and what what you need to do. I think that is awesome. All right, so I'm gonna look at this I always like to do these with the random tables. I got a what's that a thirteen. 13, Slay 11, 11, Apocalypse Beast. Nice. <laughs> so that's the quest. Mm. And roll the d20 again. Let's see what magical talisman you need in order to do it. Okay. I got a six. You have to go, you have to retrieve a vial of Phoenix Tears in order to dis, to slay the Apocalypse Beast. There you go. You got a, You got a whole adventure right there. All right, let's look at the first creatures of dragon. Level oh, level seven dragon. That's actually a a dragon that's obtainable to you can fight this pretty mid tier. Uh, actually, you can fight this the end of tier one, definitely tier two. Yeah, this would be perfect. This would be this would be like one of those adventures, you know, where you 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 face off against the. The young dragon, you know, and then have to, you know, next thing you know, here comes mommy or something. <laughs> I think it's pretty nice. Oh, uh, one thing I noticed straight off the bat compared to other other um B series like the Numenera B series or the, the mini B series in the, the white books, you get way more information than you you did in these other books. Right. Because this yeah. is essentially one dragon gives you a two, a full two page spread, right? It gives you breath options. It gives you another table for the personality of the dragon. It gives you um. It, it speaks of the essence of the dragon. It speaks about protecting his lair, how to bump it up for elder status. It this gives you an alternative. Listen, get, look here. Even got dragon variants, so they show you like worms, 
Elder Dragon gives you oh that now that I really like. They give you dragon name, which is really cool. Oh yeah. You know, also, too, man, I think that extends the amount of creatures you get because on the dragon, we counted that as one. And this is already three different stat blocks we got on the dragon. Right. Oh, look, and then you get a dragon's lair. <laughs> and the artwork for the worm is hella cool. I think it's cute. Yeah, like a cherub. Yeah. <laughs> but look at this, dude. You get a whole map, a whole dragon lair's map. Oh, nice. That is the magic items that you can recover. Oh, let's roll this. Look at the detail. Wait, 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 wait. What page are we on? We are on um, 13. A D10. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Roll it. Five. A wand of lightning. <laughs> nice. Long it, range lightning attack up against three foes and flick six points of damage to fill. Also, too, all the, some of these are reprints, but most of these are new. So and that's actually more stuff you get in. Well, not only that, but what I like about it is that um, they are, they're, they're kind of extensive, too. Like, when you really think about it, you know, you know the uh, descriptions, they, they, they have a lot. Even that could become a, a, a story element or a story beat, you know. So I think so far, oh man, dragon. Uh, and give me a freaking map. And give me a freaking map. map for every big creature. This is this is going to be incredible because this is going above the beyond right now. They're giving you a whole dragon's layer map. That's freaking awesome. Exactly. And the thing about this, that just gives you. I mean, just the fact that they give it to you, the way they broke it down. This it can be inspiration, and you think about it. Using something like the Ruin deck or the Ruin generator from the Day Colossus and then using this kind of as your blueprint, oh my God, the possibilities become endless. So, yeah. That's nice. All right, now we go to Elves. I really okay. like how. Okay, Dean. I was just going to say. Looking at this elf versus the elf, the uh, the CSR, yeah, again, much more extensive, much more, uh, much more, just much more into the idea in the idea of the of the classic elf, the elf trope. I really like it. I like it a lot. I also like the fact that they fleshed out more abilities. I think one of the issues I had with like the OB series is that they would have like one or two special abilities, but the first two things we saw, the dragon and the elf, they seem to be way more fleshed out in this book. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's exactly what I, I was getting at when I was saying that that is more extensive. I mean, no. just looking at just looking at the elf alone. I mean, what I kind of find cool about it is that, like, let's just say you decided you wanted to add, you know, elves to your game, and you but you wanted some variants. So guess what? You can say, oh, look, wood elves, volley, volley of arrows. So that, that would be something, an affinity with nature for wood elves. But we're going to talk about high elves. Oh, look, my, my high elves are sword masters, and they have magic, you know. So all that kind of stuff, to me, just makes it even cooler because it allows you to make your own little adjustments so I can actually make those as player races. I also, you know, love, like the, I also love the fact that they have random charts for every... So I, I don't want to say so every, far. the first two, but the first two, first two creatures we've seen, they have random charts. This one has Elven Song or Lay. Uh, you know, so you basically uh, have another random chart. They also have Elven, uh, Elven Magic with additional stuff to flavor and add to your, your character. That's that's not bad. Once again, a two-page spread for the first two creatures. Now dwarves. Uh, dwarves are level four. It's pretty much the same thing. They added additional ab abilities for uh, dwarves, Days and Flurry. 
Battle Fury combat formation. Another they got they've got they got beard and braid effects for dwarves. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> oh, that's cool. All right, that works. Dwarven name. I want to give you names. Oh, look at this stonework traps. Look at that. Yep. Dwarven treasures. So you got a whole treasure list for dwarves. Okay. Adventurers. These would be the normal PCs. All right, we, we got the gist of what fantasy looks like. Let's move on to a different, uh, oh, goblin. This is usually the minion father. I love the fact so far, I love the fact that everything has a two-page spread. Everything has a two-page spread. Oh, and another map. Oh, wait a minute. Go goblins look like, I think goblins is going to be one of the gatefolds because it's three pages of goblin stuff. Mm -hmm. So the goblins is probably another gatefold page, which is awesome. Yeah. And, and it gives you a lot. Oh my God. Just fleshes yeah. goblins up because you know we everybody looks at goblins as, as cannon fodder and like D and D and you know Pathfinder and stuff. But this right here gives your goblin some real personality. I mean, they they give you traps that goblins use, you know, they giving you uh what kind of loot goblins are interested in or interesting loot that you might find on them they even give you goblin activities that i mean i could literally see running an entire you know opening adventure you know all about dealing with you know a a, a goblin clan or a goblin infestation around a particular town or village or something this would be great jensen brought up a great point in chat which is actually a fantastic point. You know, they you know last year they released a plenty of bestiary, which was more of a traditional monster manual, and now you have this one, which seems to be, in my opinion, this seems more like how I would expect a cipher system monster manual to be. So, which is the preferred? Monster? There's no right or wrong answer, but which is the preferred one? And Jason thought it might cause some confusion or mislead some people that's actually a great point because if you don't have a standardized version of doing things and you know someone that isn't a a, a skilled uh you know player gm or player might my, my, you know might you that as a hindrance i could say yes but in the same breath i mean it's it's just kind of, i think it's kind of the evolution i mean if we if if I've said nothing else about Cypher, because even even as long as I've been into you know Cypher and Numenera and everything else, I'm consistently learning more things and more ways to expand upon what's already there. So maybe it might be the same thing for them. This might be their standard going forward because I mean, especially if it's a if it's big a, a big a hit that it so far is seeming to be with us. If it really you know catches on, maybe this would just be their new standard. And the goblin, yeah, goblins got like four pages, dude. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Goblin tactics. I love it. I mean, I love the fact that goblin we allies. We can spend two hours on fantasy. Let's move to the next genre. But I already got what I wanted on the fantasy because everything has two pages. Look at our freaking thunder elemental. That is freaking awesome. Yeah. I I'm gonna say this now, and I could be the jerk for saying this, but going forward, I expect all the white books to have their creatures formatted this way. Yeah. You can't give me this, right? And then go back to the old format. Because wow, this is exactly. way more information. This is exactly what I want from a monster. Well, so, I mean, if you look at it this way, I look at it this way. If this is what the monster books are going to look like, I really don't mind about the encapsulation in the genre books or in the CSR because it because those books are just to give you a preview. But if you really want to get into the nitty of the gritty, then of course pick this book up. I think I think it, I think what this does is just this make this becomes like D and D. Remember in the old days, you had to have your dungeon master's guide, player's handbook, a monster manual. Well, now I feel like you need to see SR in the site in the cipher bestiary. Just you know, two books, 
Uh, I'll tell you this. At least all the best series have to come out in this format. And Jason, Jason, I just I think what you said was a criticism. But it's actually an honest opinion, and I kind of agree with you on it. We we have to be honest with with uh, MCG and ourselves. You know, I know we the majority of people categorize as this as fans, which we are, but we also honest about whether we like something or not. So we And but that's just the thing. We've always been honest about our feelings, and so yeah, it's not being not a criticism. I mean, you you're you're pointing out something that's important, and it may have been something that they didn't notice, you know, yeah, but going forward. Zufo for said in chat too that he wished the maps didn't have the numbers put in. So if you wanted to rip them and put them on a VTT, you could. Yeah, I mean, could probably fix that yeah, too. I don't understand that. The majority of people play online. Oh, I can't, I can't, you can't even extract that. Yeah, that's actually something we can ask Kate and Bear if they have versions of that. Because yeah, they might be able to release that. That that might be something that they can release as a as a PDF, you know, or something. Mm. We can always ask about that. Yep. But yeah, going forward, this is what I want. My... So far, this is you know exceeded my expectations. So I expect all all my um, monster monster sections to look like this. Yeah, going forward, I think this is. Yeah, look at this. got? Oh, I'm sorry for cursing. Got three pages. I was just saying though. I I think I look at it this way. MCG, you've done a beautiful thing. You've outdone yourself this time. But now going forward, you have to continue to do this. We want it. <laughs> we, oh, let me go. They said the troll image is sick. Did I pass troll? No. Yeah, the know. troll image was. I like the giant personally. I like the work. Look at a hammer. A hammer's yeah. badass. It looks like some World of Warcraft. Yeah, that that troll is that troll is nasty, boy. I love it. And uh, and yeah, then we're, the, we're, we're like thirty minutes in, and we're still on fantasy. Let's move to some. I keep like, oh, oh, wait a minute. All right, go. Hey, let's move to your genre. Your genre is next. Let's do hit horror. Wait a minute. Is that a reprint image? I think I've seen that image. Is that an image they posted online? Which one? Either way, that image is super sick. Which one? The troll. Oh yeah, I like the troll, but look at the giant, dude. The giant is hardcore. I mean, don't that look like something out of Final Fantasy? <laughs> First of all, they misled us because they seem to be way more creatures than what they had in the. The giant looks cool. I, I'm not, the troll is a better image to me. What do you think, chat? Giant or troll? I like them both. I'm just saying, the giant is sick. I, 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 I just see that because I, I played so much Final Fantasy VII. It just reminds me of, of uh, your summons. <laughs> yeah, can't help what he said. It looks like Final Fantasy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jason, you know what? You're right, Jason. It does kind of put me in the mind of an old Shogun warrior. <laughs> but we're showing I, our age with that one. I want to get they, they have a pet chart for the giant. Man, look at this. And the giant's got like four pages, man. He's got a crit chart. He got uh they got a D100 giant encounter. for the item that'll be in that bag. A D one hundred table. That's awesome. Oh, no. Once again, another map. <laughs> I'm a, so I'm assuming since we're looking at the PDF, the fold out pages, everything that has the map and all the tables, right? Well, I don't know. it's hard to say here because I haven't got mine yet, so It'll probably show up tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I don't think mine even shipped yet. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm just, I'm just I talking. Know. I don't think mine is shipped yet either. Uh, let's look at horror. I don't think we can look at every single one because we just spent way too much time. <laughs> but let's look at horror. Once again, it gives you a brief description. If you don't own Stay Alive, it's super helpful. It gives you the creatures that are included in this. Plus, and features and related features. from the book that could be used, you know, with, with uh, the horror genre as a whole. You know, there, what's really cool when you look at it this way, when you look at what they're doing, not only are they giving you creatures that can be used in a related genre or, you know, 
another genre that's related to it, but it's also giving you the understanding of how, you know, the different genres cross pollinate. Like if you wanted to run horror, but you know, you wanted a sci-fi slant. So you know what? Use some robots or, you know, there's aliens, use xenomorphs, you know, you know, because the original alien was a horror movie, you know. Uh, but Aliens was an action movie. Sorry. Which I find quite D20 on you, D20. So we can do the quick. Yeah, so we can do the quick. You got a D20? Oh, yeah. I always got a D20 by hand. Uh, I rolled a three. The long abandoned house next door is purchased by a mysterious corporation. <laughs> and it has a, a D20 chart for jump scares. Roll a D20. 20. 20? 20. Cockroach fly spider horns burst out the chest of a of a chest or door swarming a character. Awesome. <laughs> nice. And, and the first entry is Ghosts, and this looks like some crazy Barry Weston New Mutants art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that looks like <laughs> that looks like something you don't want to run into. That is an awesome image of a ghost. Um, we're gonna go a little faster because we don't want we want to look at the whole book. And now it's a, another D one hundred chart interactions. Initial manifestations, a D100 chart. Motives and unfinished business, a D100 chart. More versions of ghosts, ghost names, haunted locations. That's awesome. Before they died. First of all, I'm going to just say this. The artwork in this is, I, I don't know, I think this might be my favorite my favorite by far art direction art and the, the author there, there hasn't been a picture on here that i haven't liked but look at this picture oh i cut his hair off. Killer? you know about the serial killer that's just that's that's like leatherface and jason Voorhees all mixed up and you know michael myers all mixed in one I love the fact that you get two two um, two page spreads on a simple creature like a serial killer because well, it so much more. It, you don't view it as you know, like when you pick up a traditional master manual and you see troll or you see goblin or you see you know, and it's like oh, it's just a basic stat block, one or two abilities. This fleshes it out and it makes it, you could, you know, they give you so many options. You can make this creature your own. So me, you, Al, Ken Hub, Jason, we could all look at the same two-page spread and come up with entirely different versions. And the other thing that's really nice about this book, too, like you said, it, it, gives, you, it gives you a lot of nomenclature and a lot of, I, I guess you could say, quote-unquote, cultural, uh, idioms that go along with these creatures and the monsters. I mean, you think about it, you've got serial killers and they're giving you the ser their signature style of killing. And, you know, they tell you about trophies that they collect and all this. I mean, just giving you all these, I think these things in of itself make it easy. Like if you just opened the book up and picked a monster, you could literally build an adventure around it based on the information in the book which I think is just brilliant because it's not just a monster book full of stat blocks. And it it's says, just, it, I'm sorry, Dean. No, I, I was basically done. I'm just saying it's just not a, it's not a book full of stat blocks. It's literally a book. This book literally is a tool that will enhance your gaming experiences as far as I'm concerned. I can see I'm getting a lot of ideas like off the muscle. You see, it says thing was a one category, but there's one, two, three, three versions of it. So it's actually three monsters, three different variations of a thin creature. Right. So you counted what, 67? No, no 57. You counted 57, but in the last few entries that we've looked at, we found variations and variants in every single one that we've looked at. Yep. 
So that means yeah, right. yeah, they all have additional bit. And you know what the old joke and the old Numenera was? Hungers for flesh was the motivation for every creature in the old Numenera monster manual. Yeah. Yeah. We don't see that anymore. So yeah. So horror, yeah, I think horror awesome. is horror is Oh my god, dude, there's haunted houses in this book. Oh. What 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 oh, marks here's another, here's another layer? Anthony, what, what can you name any other monster book you know of that actually is giving you not only are they giving you, you know, monsters, but now you're getting environments as well? Here's demons. Oh, they're giving a couple of variations of demons. Once again, get names, use of demons, true name. Here are his haunted houses. That's what I'm saying. Haunted houses. Oh, another... the There's no picture, though. I, I wanted to see a picture of a haunted house. There's no picture? Yeah, no picture. But I don't uh, think. First disappointment. I'm not, because you can always find a good picture of an oh, old creepy house. Oh, I love, I love the, um, the, the, what you call it, the table for haunted houses. Yep. It's a means table. It's basically the abilities of the, 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 um, the house. So you can roll on this multiple time, multiple times to either increase the difficulty of the, of the house. If they, um, you know, if the players are just kicking its ass. Key to destruction, that's actually pretty cool too. Oh, there is a haunted house picture. They saved it for the end. Home the occupants table. There's so many tables to make it your own. So it goes back to my initial point that if you you know you got ten different people using the same creatures, just rolling on these tables alone will give everyone an entirely different um version of whatever this creature was. <laughs> So even if somebody read the initial stop block, they still wouldn't. Yeah, it goes with the toolkit style that, you know, they've adopted, you know, with the white books, which is fantastic. It's vampire. Right. And they got the vampire the stop look for the vampire. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess they, they definitely look like the Anne Rice I'm vampires. Gonna, I was going to say, let's move to the another genre. But look at this picture of the of the were beast. Oh, let's see. You know, I I, lo I love were creatures. So look at it: werewolves, were a fox, were a lion, were a shark, were spider. Crazy. They got a were spider in here, dude. They got a were spider in here. <laughs> were a lion looks badass too. Oh, that were a lion is is hotness. Wear a shark. So. Yeah, the wear spider looks great. You know, all work in this is just top notch, man. Oh, now we get into. Are you ready to head on to part three? Uh, killer toys. Yeah, once again, even if it isn't one of the, oh, you know, one of the fold out uh, creatures. Everything gets a minimum of a two-page spread. Now you're spoiling me, because if you give me a two-page spread, I'm expecting two-page spread on every creature going forward. Well, I mean that, but the, and that's his man. fairy tale. Fairy tale is pretty cool, and look, I I love the fact that again how the related creatures are there, you know, and it tells you the page number of the related creatures that you could use. Um, you know, I mean, and I don't care what anybody says, Anthony, whatever we do, we need to look at pirates and we need to look at mermaids because I haven't seen anything with mermaids. Mermaids and pirates are just making me happy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go to pirates. Uh, All right, let's go to the pirate page. Did a switch? Yeah. Level two. I also like the way they changed the font on the... Uh, According to the genre, that's actually really, yeah, really good yeah. looking. They're, they're, they're in the genre of the books, yeah. So, I mean, Do you want to see it better now? I should have sent it a while ago. Sorry about that. Oh, they got pirate ships. 
<laughs> in ship to ship combat. And they got a bunch of ship names. Ship captains. Once again, the pirates have a full spread. This is like four or five pages of more charts. Unicorns. Oh, look at that. Pirate Unicorn. captains. Oh, my goodness. So pirates, I think the pirates are going to get a, 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 is a, is a fold out because that was like four pages of pirates. Oh, this image looks it. What do you think about? I'm not sure how I feel about this. What do you think about it not having a cohesive art aesthetic, just a, like a signature art style for the entire book? Because it seems like each genre has its own art style. Like this is more whimsical than its its um, presentation. Honestly, I think that's a good thing. I, I like it for the simple fact. <laughs> It, it brings you into the genre. It gets you in the mindset of the genre. Doesn't bother me in the least. I, I think that's a really cool, a cool thing. Oh man, this witch looks awesome. Oh, look at the that. The hunt master, I gotta go back to him. Oh man, that is he badass. real badass. I like it a lot. Mm, mermaid. Crafted creatures. Man, I feel like I, I can just zoom through this. I'm mean, gonna like stop and watch. Oh, look at that witch! That's what I said. The witch is hotness. That's I. That was one of the best. That's one of the best pictures I've seen in here. And has a and all the pictures are great. Go. Has a fairy tied up. Um, the PDF. Is, I think the PDF is available for order. It, I don't think it's been released just yet, but it will be like within the next week or two. Yeah, it's pre-ordered now, but it's definitely what you call it. It'll definitely be out very soon. Yeah. What usually happens is if um if the Kickstarter or the backer kick backers are getting their PDFs, that means it's like a week away from it go being open to pre-order or being open to the public. I, the PDF for sure. Physical so, book, they have, to, they have to at least see if they have a, you know, they have to ship out all the backers' books first. But after that, it's usually like a day or two before they open it up as well. I really like, I really like how also when you look at the charts and stuff that are for each genre, they literally speak to the genre itself. It's not just about the monster, but it also speaks to the monster and the style of stories you would tell. Like when you look at the mermaid, it's like, you know, uh, mermaid human conflict. So it's literally, you know, mermaids she get caught, keep cutting the fishermen's nets, you know, sailor purposely sinks their craft to be with the one they love. Just really cool stuff that like puts you in the mindset of the genre itself. Yeah, I love the, the full print spread stuff, oh, I, I mean, to quote how this is like chef's kiss stuff, because this thing is freaking awesome. Look, look they have, uh, once again, another map. I love the look, curses and examples, curse effects. Oh, here's the mermaids. Yeah, the mermaid is just... Yeah, the artwork for the mermaid is pretty crazy. Yeah, and that's what I, that's the other thing I like. I like that it's not everything isn't traditionalized. You know, they're they're really stepping outside the box with all the creature drawings and stuff. All right, I could be wrong. Excuse me, I, I could be wrong, but this is the first we has art image I think I've seen. Yeah, I've never seen this art image before. Oh yeah, that image is that image is on like a couple of older PDFs, one of the early ones. But I still, I've always liked that picture. That was a good shot. All right, let's see what we get with modern crime bosses. Oh, that's a dope picture, too. Even, you know what I like, too? Even the... First of all, they, they changed... They took some old character types that they had 
and they even the ones that they are from other books they made changes to them so they're unique in this book which is was my biggest fear and they changed the artwork for all of them because i know yeah. the artwork for crime boss was not this image and this image is hella cool yeah i like it look at this criminal operations and illicit ventures crime bosses in the fantasy genre yeah. legitimate business fronts basic crime boss safe house subordinate right. network underlings crime boss names crime boss loot list here's the hacker i like that image for the hacker that's awesome and i like how they they, they um they pick a, a different genre to, to say hey look you can use it like that one had fantasy this one has science fiction genre how to use it in that setting Secret agents. That kind of looks like Dean. Dean in Where? his twenties. <laughs> <laughs> Man, uh, you, were doing, you were doing some art money. You didn't tell us. Where's the, where's the scene you cut? We got ten percent of that money. Uh, back in the day when I was doing wet work. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, look, this is a two page spread. Assassins, bounty hunters, detectives, billionaires. I love the fact that there's a two page spread for every single creature in here. Billionaire, this is hilarious. It's Will Ferrell. <laughs> I love the self-sacrificing ability. Mm -hmm. All bodyguards get big bonuses or big payouts for their families in the event of their death. To go all shielding their client, nearby bodyguards take as many attacks as they can for their client, interposing themselves in front of attacks that would otherwise strike the billionaire. This effectively gives the billionaire as much armor as health remains in his nearby bodyguards. That is freaking awesome. And you know what's really cool about that? You know how, how normally you would make like those little side minions run away when danger starts, but the billionaire gets the opposite effect. He gets, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, he's gonna use us as meat shields to get away, which is really cool. And when you think about it, that that just gives us again to allow you to do that cinematic element because you you know the game when you know in the movie. You know, when the, the billionaire bad guy is escaping, everybody's running up, you know, getting taken out one by one. But that's awesome to give him armor like that. So you can't hit him. You just keep hitting his minions. <laughs> that's of course, cool. they yeah. give you different types of billionaire style. I mean, tables to roll on, the billion dollar look, billionaire in the news. Oh, damn, the billionaire guy, is, he got a map too. He got a bunker. Yeah, that's what I said. The billionaire's bunker. <laughs> dope. Now, right. before, sure. hold on. Let me say this because I was looking at that while you were getting caught up, Anthony. I love the fact that science fiction opens up right yeah. after it gives you. Huh? I'm going to go back to the beginning because. Yeah, when you when you read science fiction, the way it opens up, I think it, I think this is really cool because, like Anthony was saying, how it gives you the overview. It then gives you the listing of the creatures that are in the section, gives you the listing of related creatures from other sections. But then it gets, goes into sci-fi scenarios, and I love the fact that the first thing you get is a whole D100 chart, speculative elements. So if you wanted to run your you know your 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 sci-fi adventure like a more modern game or something like that you know alien structures millions of years old are found on mars you know that could be done from like right here now we got the probe going to mars the whole night this is like really cool how it just opens up like i said before it's not just a monster book it's literally a book to help you build your adventures i i think that um I really love the fact that the, the cross-reference sections from at the beginning of every 
first of all, I'm, I'm really thinking, I, when I first saw that, it was like, oh, it's broken down by genres. I was like, yeah, I don't know. But the way the book is formatted, I really appreciate it now. Like, I really love the way it's it's set up, you know, broken down by genres. And one of the reasons why it makes me really appreciate it, it gives you the other genre creatures that fit into this genre in the very beginning. So you know where to cross-reference and look at, like, okay, I'm running a sci-fi game, but here's another 20 creatures or 10 creatures that can also work in this section. And anything that uh, shortens my prep time and shortens my like a focus on what I need for a specific, uh, um, you know, session. It's only, I love stuff like that. So. And that's what I'm saying though, and not just that, you know, cause you, what you, your point to your point. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then, like I said, furthermore, if you didn't have anything bought up for your game that night, or if you already did, it's more inspiration. Like you said, so it's going to cut your prep time, but it's also going to give you you know, ideas, or it might help you flesh out a moment that you didn't have fully fleshed out. Just open the book up. You know what? You know, tonight I'm going to run a, a, you know, a, an alien, you know, uh, alien apocalypse game or something, you know, but you didn't have your alien fully fleshed out. Well, look, a plethora of all sorts of goodies. And then Robot is the first one, and they give it the my variations of Robot, the Nanny Robot, the the worker robot, and they all have different uh, abilities and uh, stat blocks. Infantry robot, space troopers. This is looking hella cool. Okay, I don't know, Anthony. I, we were we were we were we were talking about the giant and how cool it looked and how cool. Uh, the witch looked and all of that. Look at the post-human. That oh, on, picture right there is Bob. Oh my Aliens. God. Um, we go to post-human. I'm, I'm loving that picture. Oh yeah. Uh, artificial intelligence image is dope too. Look at this. And that's a but that's a reprint. That's a reprint? Yep. That picture is in uh, the Cypher System rulebook, I, I believe, if I remember correctly. It's just small. But oh, yes, I'm, I'm quite sure. Let me while you while you get while you get to the post human. Oh, yeah, post human is dope. That's dope, man. That's like yeah. that's the picture. Self-repair, automatically gain two hit points per round. Yeah, I really loved it, the way these, these two, oh, okay, superheroes. Let's see how they break this down. Uh-oh, wait a minute, stop. All right, I'll be, I'm coming back to that. <laughs> you know, that's that's my jam right there. First of all, I'm really, before we go further, I'm really surprised that I think like 90% of this is all original art. Yeah, it's a lot and of really work. One of the, the main, like people that are, like you know, people that are anti MCG or anti money cook games. One of their biggest gripes is, I, I know I've had this conversation with Eric several times off air. One of their biggest gripes is the rehashing of artwork and the rehashing of creatures in multiple books. Me personally, I never really had an issue with it because I understand that they have so many, like, especially Cypher they have so many individual books and you want to give as much information. Like, if you don't want all your fantasy creatures spread out across five different fantasy books. So if someone purchases one book, you want to give them as much of the goodness you possibly can in that one book. But that is one of the detractors' main arguments. And they can't say this about this book. Not at all. This book is... They cannot say this about this book. Because we we almost two-thirds halfway through the book. And to be honest, I'm only... I've only seen one artwork that I'm absolutely sure was a rehash. 
Well, the, only, the one I told you absolutely sure was a rehash. The one I told you was a rehash, man. If you look on 127 of the PDF of the Cypher System rule book, you'll see it. It's just not the full picture that you're looking at. It was a rehash. But I'm just saying, so that's page 127. But yeah, it's... So, okay. So Superhero starts out with charts. Yeah. Two D20 charts, super villain personality and motivations. A, a third one for super super villain power origins. Then it goes in and oh man, a gadgeteer mastermind. Awesome. Super power origins. Once again, the, the font changes, the art aesthetic changes. That's actually growing on me. This is a wasp-like character. The Gadgeteer. Man, the speedster villain is pretty scary. <laughs> oh, look, they got a Gadgeteer lair. Yep. Doomsday device. Oh, I like the art for the speedster. Yeah. The yeah, energy yeah, wonder. The art style yeah. changing perception on um, perceptions is actually growing on me. Yeah, I like it a lot. So so far, Anthony, I've 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 identified another piece of art that's a rehash. Uh third piece of artwork out of everything we've looked at so far. This is a basic criminal art. This is pretty cool too. I love the Oscar Wilde quote too. <laughs> yeah. This is so dope. <laughs> Energy Will the Super Villains. I'm sorry if I'm um, zooming through it now because uh, we've already been here hours, so I don't want to take up all your time. Oh, look at this. Oh, the strong hero, the strong yeah. villain. Yeah, the strong villain is cool. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm really, uh, I'm really digging, like, like the stuff that they, that they've done here. The cosmic beings is, is just sickness. You know what's really cool about this stat block for the superheroes is you see all these abilities that that are they give the super those are easily abilities that could be converted to players absolutely converted to ciphers or converted to artifacts or well yeah absolutely i mean that everything is there you know i mean a lot of this stuff that they have here is some you know too when we were you know when we were doing our superhero stuff stuff that we created on the side yeah. And so now you can just see how it's easily implemented into uh, a player character as well as, you know, using it as villains because I'm digging, I'm digging this. I'm digging this a lot. I like, I like the, um, oh, I'm sorry, dude. I'm so sorry. I was just saying that, uh, no, the, the, where, you, where you at now with the rogue super villain, I love the fact that it just, again, it speaks to the genre so much. I mean, you can see that being a uh, like a Deathstroke Terminator or, you know, or, uh, you know, one of those type heroes, you know, that, that are contemplative, but, you know, are a badass when it comes to, you know, getting into the thick of things. He got a Doberman with him. That's just hot. I love the fact that in the superhero section, they didn't give you specific heroes like they did in the, um, CSR in the superhero section, where it was like, this is a specific hero. This is more like a template for that style of villain. You know what I mean? So it's, instead of giving you like a rogue, like giving you Nighthawk, the, and he will be their version of a, ro a rogue super villain, they just gave you the template so that you could create your own rogue villain or speedster super villain or monstros or monstros what I like, what I like too, how they give you all the cool names. You know, they give you inspirational names that you can kind of, you know, build that whole concept around. Because you know, with superheroes, you, you know, if you if you're playing, especially if you're playing a four color superhero game, you know, names are 
very important. Your code name is one of the most important things, you know. So yes, I'm uh I'm with it. I like it. I, I guess uh, uh now post apocalyptic. The first image is dope. Okay, uh I'm digging digging that right there. That that picture is hotness. Yeah. And once again, once again the and problem with the community. Once Rag again, yeah. look at this. Woo wee, that's crazy. I like it. The rag beast. Oh. Yeah, I find myself I forget I'm on stream and I'm just like reading I'm like, oh snap, how how would I use this? Glowing roach. <laughs> Oh, oh some something like this in the game we played. The game we played. Didn't he have some sort of roach that did have some like um, I remember they had remember they had the they had the uh the glowing they had the glowing uh look like gems in the in their back that went down their back. You know, and so that's why I started laughing when I saw it. I'm like, oh wow. And remember I because you remember you had to face the queen one and she flew. She had wings. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think we streamed that game. Didn't you run a, a post apocalyptic game with something to do with roaches? I believe, yeah. It was, uh, I think that's what I ran, the one I ran for IsoloCon. No, I'm saying, Al, the, the game Al, we streamed. I don't know if he did or not. I think he made that. That sounds familiar. Radioactive Bear looks hella cool, too. Kind of looks like a Chewbacca a little bit. Do you remember? Do you remember the movie from the nineteen seventies called The Prophecy? What about the giant mutated bear? I don't know. So that image made me think of radioactive cocaine bear. Well, I'm saying oh. there, there's an old movie called The Prophecy, and literally that's what the thing was kind of like. It was kind of like because uh, they were doing genetic experiments or something at some kind of. Uh, process and plant and they were pouring chemicals in the water and they caused the bear to mutate into these monster monstrous things atomus oh. oh, yeah, that's dope man there's so much here the cannibal that's it i'm spoiled i want all my bestiaries to look like this a Shellington. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. So yeah. So all of this stuff. These are all rad beasts. They like they listed it as one, and it's like six rad beasts in here. So it's way more than any. Uh, uh, if you got any, if anybody's listening to this with any children, earmuffs. What's the skull look like to you? The what? What does the skull look like? The head of the skull look like to you? <laughs> you so stupid. Earmuffs. <laughs> it's an ear canal. <laughs> uh, you don't know what I'm talking about, Al? The earmuffs part of what it looks like. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Earmuffs. Yeah, <laughs> just leave it at earmuffs, Anthony. Stop. <laughs> this is a PG-13 channel. Look at the mutants. Oh, my goodness. Raiders. Oh, I like this image. This image is dope. For what? Oh, the Raider image? Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh, look at the Fell Raider on the next page. I know how they have so many charts for everything. Yes. Look, the Fell Raider. I uh, think some of these images might be rehashed from the new book because, or oh, they just got a ton of images, extra images for the, you know, all the submitting images for the, you know, the new Poke Apocalyptic stuff coming out. Marauder, zombies. Yep, you see, look. Zombies has an extensive layout in um, the CSR. I am in Stay Alive. That image is brand new. 
Let me see. Well, if, not only that, that but we're probably. getting right only that. They're not just that. Listen, they've got zombie twists, zombie creatures. Then they've got different kind of zombies: artificial intelligence zombies, zombie hulks, zombie sprinters, zombie spitters, zombie singer, zombie sorcerer. Yeah, I think. Um, oh, look at this bite ability. The Hulk bites, inflicting damage and clapping down on the victim's limb. If they fail a second speed defense roll, the target automatically takes damage each round they are caught, and all their attacks are hindered, including attempting to escape. Meanwhile, the Hulk is free to bash another foe as their action, even as they chew on a previously caught target. That is a really cool ability. Yes. Stupid. Because on you, holding you like a rag doll, and then punching somebody else. That's right, just punching one of your one of your friends. Zombie See now, spitter. now, now I want to do a two headed zombie. Zombie spitter, zombie singer. Oh, oh this is this is OD man. Look yeah. at this warlords. The warlord is hot. I mean, that's like a combination. What was what was the dude's name from Beyond Thunderdome? Oh yeah, um, what's that, Master Blaster? Master Blaster, yeah, that's like a variation of a Master Blaster. Oh, I got a feeling Warlord's gonna get his own spread. Oh no, it didn't. It was weird, West. I'm digging it, Chupacabra. <laughs> Oh, they got Ketsu Gulato, so they got a Ketsu Sword. <laughs> nice. A Grizzly Bull. Okay, that just don't sound right. Chupacabra. The art on the Chupacabra could be a little bit better. Um, Plus Beast Bounties. The Grizzly Bull looks dope. Grizzly Bulls, yeah. Oh, look. Oh, look at that Tumblr. Yeah, death tumbleweed. That's what it is. <laughs> and you know, oh, you had to have a jackalope. Yeah. <laughs> Nightcrawler, gun slingers. Forge born. Forge born. Oh man. Man. oh man, that's some straight up steampunk for your nerves. Locomotive. Flesh mare. That's a reprinted art, I think. I've seen that before. Alchemist. <laughs> Deadshot. Lawman. A lawman's going to get its own spread. So it looks Wild like I'm going to have to... Uh, looks like I'm going to up, I'm gonna have to upgrade my, my Wild West, my Wild Weird West adventure. I'm gonna have to update it with some some new goodies. Let, let me ask: Is is there a um, collector's edition for this? Because I need to have that book in my life. But what edition? Collector's edition. You know the leather brown version of this book. No, I don't think there's a uh, there's not a there's not a deluxe in my life. Okay, now that was the last genre. Now we just go to the index. Uh, the loop, the goblin loop tables in the back of the book for some reason. Or, or is it, oh, it has all the loop tables in the back of the book for some reason. From the spreads. That's awesome. That's you cool. know that. See, what I like about that, you could literally just print these up, print these pages up. Oh, okay. Okay, all so all the stuff that would like kind of be cool that yeah, you got worker robots, nanny robot, you got all the hideouts. All right, um, yeah, we went through the whole book, so I'll, I'm gonna cut off the let me know when I can cut off the uh stream so you go back to the other image. He said cut it. Okay. So, Anthony, let me ask you this question. How many stars out of five? 
This is five out of five. Agree. I, I, mean, I, um, I, I think this is. Oh man, this goes into my top five cipher system books for sure. Yeah, this um, this this product is actually, it's way more than I expected. Um, I I cannot even say enough. It's way more than I expected. It hit all the things that I was looking for. It hit things that I didn't know I was looking for that I wanted in my life. <laughs> so, great. I, to be honest, great I, I think that. I just love the direction they're going in with the white toolkit books. And I think this is like the, you know, this complements those style of books perfectly. Because once again, it's a more of a toolkit bestiary version. Like the, the way the layout is done, the, the way that you get two page spreads on every creature in the entire book, the way that it, it's not specific to this is how I want you to run it. It's more like, hey, these are some charts. These are some tools. These are some ideas you can use, abilities you can use when you run it. It's in my wheelhouse of gaming, so I, I don't know. I, th th yeah, this is this is quickly becoming my top five. I think Bruce did a hell of a job. I, I remember Bruce telling me at Game Hole that he was doing a lot of, like, cool stuff with these creatures. I have no idea what he meant, but now I could definitely see the hard work he put into this bad boy. Well, here's something else that I, you know, since we, you, while you were talking, I was listening to what you say, and I just happened to look at the, looking at these end sheets, okay, uh, and just the pirates alone. Not only do they give you, like, some pirate ships, but they actually give you the actual captains of these ships as well, which <laughs> I think is really freaking awesome, because it's like, you know, it gives you it gives you uh, tactics and so on and so forth. This this is just a really really good product overall. I mean, yeah, I'm a you know we're we're all cipher fanboys here, but all right, and and let's be fair too. If there was one thing, it answered all my fears personally, but you can always want more, right? And as a consumer, you should always want more, right? So if there was one thing that you had wished about this book or, or something that you think could have been done better, what would have that been? Honestly, I think the book could have been a little bigger. I mean, we're, we're talking about, we're, we're, let, let's be honest. Cypher System rule book is 450 pages. You know, um, It'd have been nice. I could have seen this book being at least 225, at least half the size of the, the rule book. You know, I could have dealt with, you know, 25 more pages. Yeah, I would definitely say that would be the one thing I would. 200 I mean, pages is a little light. Just considering the fact that you, you're talking about the Cypher System rule book. Cypher System rule book touches that, not, what is it, nine genres in the book? In the in the uh, cipher system rule book, yeah, you know. So I mean, I'm kind of with you. Maybe we should have had one for each of the genres in the cipher system rule book at, at the very least, you know, because they did yeah, add. Yeah, weird I put it, yeah, I put it the best. He said, "As a go-to booster, I will happy pay more for a larger single volume use in all my games." But that's what I'm wondering. I'm wondering if this is going to be a thing. Like, there's going to be a Beast Theory 2 or Beast Theory 3 with every genre. Like, they should have announced another Beast Theory with the Dust and Neon. You know what I mean? Because that would be hella cool if every Kickstarter you get another Beast Theory. But I agree with Alan. I said it earlier. There's no going back after you give us two page spreads on every creature. Every Beast Theory has to be two page spreads. Yeah. I'm 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 kind of I'm kind I you know what it is though because I'm not looking it, it is a bestiary but this to me I I, I really think they should have called this like the monster toolkit because it's to me it's more you know it's more than just a bestiary it's more than just a monster book it really to me it really speaks to the essence of cipher and giving you tools to build adventures as well as just things to seed adventures or to populate adventures. Was it the Morning Canaan 
5D bestiary that was similar to this too that had like multiple spread. Was it the Morning Canaan book or am I thinking of the wrong 5D monster book? Thank you, but I don't know. Morning Canaan I have over here. I haven't looked at it in a long time. I'd have to pick it put pick it up to look at it. If yeah, I'm really ready. Ready to look at my five E books. But I thought they did something similar with multiple well, spreads on like iconic classic D monsters. Um, no, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, Mortar Cannon. It was the other one. Um, it was the Beholder that had all the stuff. What, what's the Beholder's name? Oh, I can't think of the. I'd have to go over here and find the book. Let me see. At any rate, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Volo, that's it. Yeah, Jason. Oh, Volo's died, yeah. It was Volo. Volo, Volo and what the Volo's book did, it basically it gave you uh, a lot of culture for the monsters, kind of like what this did. This, you know, so yeah, it, it did do that. It gave you larger spreads on iconic creatures. But I, I think this uh, I think this is a way to go when it comes to monster books now. I mean, considering everybody likes so much spelled out for them, you know. I will say this, this has enough meat in it that all you need is the CSR and this book and you should be able to run pretty much anything, anything you want yeah. for at least a couple of years. At the very least, I mean, <laughs> like, like I said, the, the just the amount of stuff that's in here, the various, the various, uh, inspirations i i'd say they give you i mean just looking at the goblin traps I, I'm, I'm really digging it could you imagine setting something up you know and you know these goblins got these traps set up all around a, a small town that's in a valley and you they, they're trying to get out or you know you're trying to get in this would be crazy all right so chat what's your initial reaction uh you got to see it first time like us or well, how do you rate this book do, do you think it's a you know a, a fantastic addition to the cipher system, or could you do without it? Do you think it's a must-have? What's or your opinion? Is it mediocre? I definitely think it's a must-have, and um, we we haven't rated books in in a couple of years now. We might have to at the end of the year we'll do them because there's a, been a ton of new books that we can rate. But um, I think this is going on the you know my top five for sure. Yeah, I would definitely put this in my top five. I'll put this in my top three. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, Ketup made a good point. He said, I think it's a great example of what a best three should be for narrative systems. I, I agree. I think that, I think, yeah, I think that's what this does is it leans into the whole idea of the narrative versus just being a book of stat blocks. Yeah, um, art's fantastic. That's another thing, too. The art is fantastic. I think it's probably one of the most beautiful B series I've ever seen. At first, I was a little hesitant about the art style switching between genres, but I could definitely see why Bear Javier did it that way because it just works. Like, as you, it, the book flows beautifully, if that makes any sense, with the art direction changing according to genre. And um, yeah, that was a concern I had at the very beginning, but that quickly went away. But you know, I mean, uh, Jason made his point. He said, I'm not crazy about some of the speciesism in it from orcs. The orc species is composed of miserable, misbegotten humanoids. You know, I understand. I can say yes to that, Jason, but I also can say no, because by lore, by the nature of what an orc is supposed to be, that's their nature. That's that's how they're written. That's how they were, you know, described. They were supposed to be described as miserable. That's why they're so mean and honorary. That's why they are what they are. So I don't see speciesism. You know, there's always the anomaly in everything. That's how come we played half orcs and so on and so forth. And so, you know, so that part doesn't bother me. And, and you know, that's just something I, I, I wouldn't have even it would never even come up in my, my thought process because I don't look at it through those lenses. But that's just me. I can, I can see Jason's point, though, because that isn't every lore. World of Warcraft orcs don't have that lore. 
So no, but I'm saying where orcs no orcs originated the original lore that orcs come from. Yes, people have gone come forward and made changes, but I'm saying like the just like you know, you know everybody did, doesn't realize you know fairies were always written as mischievous, you know, you know, and so on and so forth. But by the time you got to Peter Pan and Tinkerbell, she was just the sweetest thing out there, you know. So I'm talking about at its core where they come from, not necessarily where we are now. Yeah, Carol said, if you want to go for original stuff, most of that fantasy stuff doesn't match. Yeah. Right. And I agree. I agree with you too, Ken. But that's what I'm saying. But I'm thinking, orcs, they just went down the traditional path. That's all. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I didn't really read the backdrop on the orcs to really have a like a full-on opinion on the matter. But I can I'm see just going on what Jason said. I haven't, I haven't read it either. I'm just going on what Jason said in the sense that they're, you know, being described as miserable misbegotten beast you know humanoids if you will you know and i'm just saying from you know uh lore or mythology or wherever you want to you know pull it from that was kind of the whole thing about orcs you know either way either way i think they are like an orcs are hella cool and this big series is hella cool i i think that Going forward, my advice would be whatever genre someone's getting into sci-fi system and they would tell me, hey, I want to run supers. My my go-to response was, oh, all you really need is the CSR and claim the sky. If somebody told me I wanted to run horror, I would say, hey, all you really need is the CSR and stay alive. If somebody told me I want to run, you know, Star Trek, I mean, all you need is, uh, you know, the CSR and oh, there's, 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 now my reply would have to be all you ever need is insert white book csr and the bestiary right because i honestly feel like it's it it gives us that holy trinity for whatever genre you want to use in in a um, cipher system this is that third book that you must have absolutely absolutely so chat, I mean, I'm, I'm so happy you got to sit and walk through this uh, first time walk through with us. And um, yeah, I'm super excited for this book. Now I want my physical copy. And we, we could go on the Discord and talk about it more. But uh, Dean, you have any final thoughts? Uh, first, you had to make an appearance. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, no, I mean, really, my final thought, like I said, we both agree. This book goes in the top five. Uh, this is a this is a should have book by your side along with you uh, and your CSR and your whatever white book. I think that's just it in a nutshell. Uh, Cipher system has finally gotten to the point that there's a trinity of books, and this is definitely a must have. And if you if you're watching this on YouTube and you happen to have a copy of the PDF, put in chat what's your favorite piece of work work of art from this book because uh I, uh I don't know I have a good five or six contenders I'm just curious to see what the art in this is fantastic so I'm curious to see what everyone's favorite piece of art is from this book and um yeah there's some images I know are going to grow on me yeah there's a there's a few that just jumped out at me initially and uh there's definitely going to be more I'm a, I'm going to spend some time i'm definitely going to end up buying a second copy of this book because it's uh it's going to get used <laughs> it's going to get used a lot if you like us and you like what we do join the server a little bit of discord server for all things mommy cook games we have the largest fan run discord server for anything mcg there's great conversations being had games being played and um, we're going to talk about this book as soon as we get off here. We, we have um, several thousand people there chatting away daily, and we'll be happy to have you. But if this goes not for you, join our Facebook group. Not as big as our Discord, but still great conversations being had there. If you find it in the kindness of your heart, give us a um, subscribe here on Twitch.
or even followers for that matter it helps us or if you can go to our youtube channel like share subscribe there we're still trying to build both those platforms up simultaneously and any help you could give us would be greatly appreciated our videos are always free but if you want to help us out financially in a little way give us a little donation on Kofi. it'll be um, it helps us out with little things that get uh, helps us out financially for little things like giveaways and such. Or go to our online store, pick up some cool Cypher Unlimited merch. I normally at this point in time say like Dean has on or like I have on, but neither one of us have any Dean merch on today. But trust me, it's cool. If you watch any of our videos, you'll know. And uh, last but not least, we love you guys. One last thing before you hop on out. CypherCon is definitely on. We have a date. We have a time set. We just can't physically announce it to end, um, MCG tells us. But trust me, everything is set in stone. We have it out all the details. You should be hearing an official num announcement for Monica Games shortly. Awesome. Yeah, definitely look forward to CypherCon. We definitely uh, have things in the works and some things set in stone, like Anthony said, but we can't really super talk about it. <coughs> but yeah, this should be bigger and better than last time because we are giving much, we are, we have much more lead in, into the event. So yeah, things should be a lot smoother and better these this time around. Um, and yeah, from, from he, me here from the shadows, Ancient Albatross, thank you again, everyone, for stopping by. Uh, and thank you again, Anthony and Dean, you know, talking about the book. It looks awesome, by the way. I know y'all saw me tapping in the chat there. It, it looks amazing, uh, the bestiary. So everyone out there, definitely go check it out when you can. And as usual, from us at the CU, we will see you later.